Overview of bioseparation. In general, bioseparation refers to large-scale separation and the purification of biological products, which is very important in biotechnology or bioprocess. In the first module, we are going to discuss about the characteristic of bioseparation and an idealized process. Characteristic of bioseparation includes common modes and scale of operation, nature and challenge of bioseparation, and a good bioseparation process. An idealized process emphasizes on four steps in bioseparations, known as RIPP. R stands for removal of insoluble, I stands for isolation of products, the first P stands for purification, and the second P stands for polishing. Biotechnology or bioprocess can be defined as the areas where bioproducts such as pharmaceuticals, foods, flavors, fuels, and chemicals are produced with the aid of a biocatalyst such as an enzyme, microorganisms, plant cell, or animal cell in a bioreactor. Bioproduct recovery process or so-called downstream process is required for recovering the final products which can be divided into three stages. Primary recovery includes cell harvesting, cell disruption, cell debris or biomass removal and extraction. Intermediate purification involves separation methods to increase concentration, whereas the final purification stage includes methods to increase purity and solvent removal or dehydration. There are two major considerations in the downstream process. First, there are a tremendous variety of products that can be produced. Second, that all the products are exclusively made biochemically, but also partially biologically converted. This diversity of products spawn the broad spectrum of separation methods used in the downstream process. There are various types of products in a molecular level which can be further break down to different types of antibiotics, amino acids, enzymes and many others. In general, separation processes can be classified into physical separations, equilibrium control separations and rate control separations. Although there are so many diverse products that can be produced in biotechnology, most of the separation methods typically used for conventional chemicals can be applied in bioseparation. Bioseparations must consider the mode of operation used in the process, whether they are operating under steady state or under steady state conditions, whether the equipment is operating in batch or continuous, and whether the fluid flow is co-current or counter-current. These different modes of operations play crucial roles in determining the suitable types of bioseparation techniques. Nature of bioseparation Common techniques in bioseparation is largely based on chemical separation, but they can be modified based on specific requirements and in some cases, novel separations may be necessary. Bioseparation must put a great emphasis on high throughput or productivity, high selectivity, and must satisfy the stringent quality requirements and consider using degradable materials. Bioseparations normally operate at low temperatures but with different multi technique separation. For small scale processes, which includes laboratory and pilot plants, the objective will be to demonstrate purpose process. To gain processing information, to produce a relatively small quantities for subsequent clinical trials and obtain enough information for marketing evaluation. For large-scale process, the factory must be equipped with commercial facilities. There are several challenges when one is dealing with bioseparation, such as low product concentration and high product requirements. Temperature, shear, pH, ionic strength, solubility of bioproducts in organic solvents, and stringent quality requirements. A good bioseparation process should ensure desired purity and stability of the product with a relatively low production cost. The process should be reproducible, scalable, and meets the regulatory guidelines. Two characteristics of bioseparation. First, the input is a dilute suspension containing solid and liquid suspension that has to be separated to produce a highly purified and stable dry product. Second, the recovery and purification operation may require more equipment and labor than all other parts of the process combined. 
Thus, the process must be well conceived and well designed. There are several questions that one has to consider in designing the separation process, such as what are the value and acceptable product qualities? What are the product and impurities in each process stream? What are the economics of various alternative separations and several others? Such questions are important for designing an optimized process for the recovery of products of adequate quality coupled with huge recovery and minimum effort.